chapter two homework, uh, making a screencast of it. Um, here we go. Uh, for problem number seven, it, problem seven and 10 go together. So to find the displacement of this triangle, we end up basically looking at the area uh, so of the triangle, pardon me. So to find the displacement of this object. So it's one half base times height. The base is this interval. The height is the maximum height. And I get 0.08 meters or eight centimeters. To estimate the acceleration, I have to figure out the slope of this graph in this region and in this region. So from 0.10 to 0.15 seconds, it goes from 0 to 0.8 meters per second. So that's a slope of 16 meters per second squared. And from 0.15 to 0.30 seconds, the slope is negative 5.3 meters per second squared. One third the magnitude of acceleration because we have three times the time interval for the same change in speed. For <clears throat> problem 20, uh, we had something thrown up. Maximum height goes down into a hole 10 meters below. We're asked to find the total time that this thing's in the air and then find um, the final velocity right before it hits that bottom of the hole. So I'm going to think about two parts, part upward and then part downward. So um, the time upward would be change in velocity over acceleration is equal to change in time. 20 meters per second divided by 10 meters per second squared. So it takes two seconds to get to the tippy top of that path. Coming back down to the bottom, now we're going to be falling 30 meters. So I plug that into change in y is equal to 1 half at squared. That's 2.45 seconds downward. So the total time for this is 4.45 seconds. There's a few other ways to do this part A. Uh, I could have done it first without actually solving part B. But now that I know the total time, I could use VO plus A times T. So negative 20 meters per second up plus A times T. The total time is 4.45 seconds. So that gives me 24.5 meters per second downward. Now, I could have also done VF equals VO plus AT for just this second part of the trip and use my VO as zero and the time down is 2.45 seconds. Would have gotten me the same answer. Next, <clears throat> problem 27, we had these three graphs. I think we went over these in class. A position graph, we simply define the velocity at seven seconds. We look at the slope. The slope of this region is negative 10 meters per second. For a velocity graph, we look at the value, seven seconds, that is negative 20 meters per second. For an acceleration graph, we needed to know the initial velocity, which is 10 meters per second, and then the area from zero to seven seconds tells us the change in velocity. And that's plus 65 meters per second. And I talked about how I could use some symmetry between five and seven seconds and then three and five seconds so that really the, the net area I'm interested in is the area between zero and three seconds. And that gives me a total velocity at seven seconds for the acceleration graph. Um, that would be 75 meters per second. For P39, I've got these three graphs, and I was asked to draw a situation of a ball rolling on a ramp or something like that. So initially, it's going to the left. It's moving upward because I've got a negative velocity, but that velocity is getting increasing towards zero. So the ball's slowing down, so it's an upward ramp. In this region, it's going a constant speed to the left, so that's a constant negative velocity. And here, this is steeper, and I know that because this graph is steeper. So at the end, it appears like it's flat again. I have a slow negative velocity. Positive accelerations, increasing velocities. For problem 49, um, again, I went over this in class. This is a piecewise function. So part one, I'm thinking of the rocket accelerating upward with its engine on. Part two, I'm thinking about the rocket accelerating downward, but still moving upward. Um, it's accelerating downward due to gravity. It's moving upward because it was already moving at the end of stage one. And part three where it's falling downward from its maximum height. So in order to find the maximum height, I really need to look at regions one and two. So for region one, I'm going to use this delta y is equal to one half at squared. And I get that the displacement during that first 30 seconds is 13,500 meters. I also want to know the velocity at the end of that first interval and that's A times T, 900 meters per second up. I want to know that because that final velocity for region one is going to be the initial velocity for region two. And when I do that, I plug it into the equation of VF squared equals VI squared, or actually VO squared, I guess, plus 2A delta Y. 
If I get to my change in um, vertical height during re region two, is 40,500 meters. So my total maximum height is 54,000 meters. For part three, I'm going to be falling down from 54,000 meters. So I can use this delta y is equal to 1 half at squared or something similar to that. And I find out that the time to fall is 104 seconds. <coughs> so I can use that also to find the final velocity right as this thing hits the ground. I know the time here, 104 seconds. I know the time here is 30 seconds. So to find the total time of the trip, I need to figure out the time for part B. Well, for part B, or part two, I guess, I can use a couple of different ways to do this. VF equals VI plus AT is reasonable. So I'm going up at 900 meters per second. Acceleration is down at 10 meters per second squared. To have a negative acceleration and end up at zero meters per second, that's going to take 90 seconds. So the total trip, 30 plus 90 plus 104, is 224 seconds. Next, oh, and this is the graph, slope here plus 30 meters per second squared, slope here negative 10 meters per second squared. We finish off at negative 1,040 meters as noted, or meters per second, as noted up here. For 57, I solved it two ways. I did this as an example problem. This is using kinematics. This is using energy. Um, this is the initial diagram. You, you wanted your answer only in terms of h and theta, so I just happened to put delta x there, and I had to solve for delta x in terms of h and theta. So it's a little more complicated to do kinematics to solve this than opposed to energy, but I wouldn't expect you'd remember how to solve things with energy right now. Later in the year, maybe. So um, the key thing is, again, getting this acceleration. I'm looking at net force over total mass. That's Newton's second law. That's g sine theta. That goes over here. This delta x, I can use uh, basically the properties of geometry to, to figure out. I know that's h. I know that's theta. This delta x I can put as delta x is equal to h over sine theta because that's the hypotenuse. Both of these give the same answer. The final thing I'm going to do is a little extra bonus problem. It was p31. It gave a position function 2t cubed minus 9t squared plus 12 meters. And it was asking you to find the velocity and acceleration at two points in time, which was 0 and 3 seconds. So I used change in position with respect to time for my velocity equation. That's 6t squared minus 18t meters per second. <coughs> That gets me 6, t, which is the same thing as this, if I factor out the 6t. So t is equal, v is equal to 0 at 0 seconds and at plus 3 seconds. If I take the second derivative of position with respect to time, I get an acceleration function of 12t minus 18 meters per second squared. So at 0 seconds, this gives me an acceleration of negative 18 meters per second squared. At 3 seconds, it gives me an acceleration of plus 18 meters per second squared.